tell the truth, if you could trade it all over again, would you? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday. It is March 29th. Now, that reminds me. Thursdays, every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Lily Star, my favorite co-host, and I go live on YouTube. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, right when you hear the bell going off. We go live for about an hour. We're talking to our viewers about stocks they're interested in. Now, honestly, my hope is that you're doing some due diligence. You're looking at charts, and you got a hot chart that you want to share with us, and we're going to do the due diligence together. Yeah, we'd love that. But if you want us to look at stocks you're already holding, we'll gladly do that too. But remember, if you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel for your stock, chances are we're not going to find it either. But we'll look for you nonetheless. Now, the stocks we are looking at are OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks that can make us some money. And they are everywhere. They're on every exchange. The New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, the OTC. Because a penny stock is nothing more than any stock under five bucks, and they're on every single market. Now, the great thing is, is that I can do all my research at one site, for the most part, right here, the otcmarkets.com website. I know it says OTC Markets, and that is what it's set up for, but they bring in a lot of information about the major exchanges. You get the news here, you get share structure, financial filings. They tell you what stocks have gone through splits. They tell you who's changed tiers. I mean, there is so much information here. You really need to search this site out. You're probably missing out on a lot of information you didn't even know existed. And did you know this is the only site online that does this for the OTC stocks? I mean, there's lots of sites that are updated every day by FINRA and the SEC on the major exchanges. But for the OTC, I do believe this is the only site. So get into a habit of starting your research here. I promise it's going to save you a lot of time and frustration. Okay, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. That's looking bad and sad. I'm not liking that. Those are all low numbers. Come on. We need a little bump. A little bump. We didn't get no bump at all. Dollar volume. Goodness gracious, we're down to $1.2 billion. We need to be near $2 billion just to get out of bed. This is bad. Share volume, under $5 billion, less than half of where we need to be, $10 billion shares. And trades, well, we're pretty much close to that 250,000 trades a day, which has been our basement floor for six months, though we've been under it now for the last 45 days, I guess. Hooray, we're back up to 250,000 trades. All right, I'm tired of talking about that. Let's talk about something else. I've got three very interesting stocks to share with you today that I think have a good chance of making money. And in case you missed it, folks, all three of the stocks that we covered yesterday had gains today. Are you keeping up with what we're looking at? You probably should. Would you believe we are looking at another mining company? We are. This is ticker O-R-E-A-F, O-Reef, also known as OREA Mining Corp. Now, as I told you yesterday, I am not in the habit of looking for mining companies, though there are a lot of them out there right now. What I'm looking for are hot charts but I have no idea what company is attached to that chart. I'm just looking for heat. And if I find heat, I really don't care what sector it's in. If I can find news, if I can find a catalyst to get that chart moving, I am in. Well, this company, she has got a hot catalyst and a sweet chart. She had news come out about a deal that they've been trying to close for over a year on this gold mine that has a verified 5 million ounces of gold in it. You're talking like about $6 billion, and they say they're going to close this deal by the end of March. Folks, that's two days away. I think now is the time to look at it. So, Old Reef, she finished today almost at $0.08, cents, .07865, and just about 3.5% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. This is the better tier, the QB. It's better because you have to audit your financials to be here. That's great for us. It makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got that verified profile and that transfer agent verified tick I am always telling you to look for. There's a lot of important information being represented by these green ticks that is validated by the OTC markets. Believe it or not, this is an unbiased party verifying this information. So if you're getting into an OTC stock for a long hold, you want to get as much verified information as you can. But if you're just jumping in and out of these stocks real quick, 
don't worry too much about that. We also got independent directors. You need those whenever you uplist. They probably use them to get to the QB from the pink, and if they have them still, they may have aspirations of going up somewhere else. So I've already told you what this company does. Let's check out the relative volume. Yay, it jumped today about 100%. Yesterday, everything fell about 50%. Today, hopefully, it all goes up 100. Counteract that. So we went from 92,000 shares up to 181,000 shares. Yay. Share structure for O-Reef. All right, our outstanding shares. We got about a quarter billion shares here. And how many shares did we have? I can't remember if I actually looked this up. Yeah, I did. We have about 200 million shares in the float. It's a pretty high float. It's not the worst we've seen. Looking at their financials, we're not gonna find anything because they are an exploration company right now. They're not making any revenues. But I'm believing they're probably done with their exploration. They found the mother load, five million ounces of gold underneath the ground. All they gotta do is get it up and they're gonna solve this revenue problem in a right big hurry. Disclosures for the company. Actually, we don't have anything down here since 2019. So let's check out that news. Now, we got lots of news. I've opened this up for an entire year. This goes back to March of last year. And virtually all of this news is about this gold mine. It's in France, and it is called the Montagne d'Or. Now, most of this news is about testings, exploring, but they also had a lot of other news. They had some sort of international incident that they had to work out between Canada and France over this piece of property. I don't know all the details. A lot more DD can be done. But what I do know is the most recent news press here that came out at the beginning of March says everything is cleared up and they expect to close this deal in March. So they tell us here that Aria Mining Corps provides an update on the closing of the acquisition of the additional 55% interest in the company, now giving them a total of 100% ownership. The company is in French, Guiana, France. Closing was scheduled for yesterday, the news is old, February 28th. However, on Thursday, February 23rd, the Canadian government sanctioned numerous additional Russian entities and individuals, including certain ultimate shareholders of our company. Norgold has extended the deadline for closing the transaction from February 28th to March 30th. Oh my goodness, we've only got one day. That's tomorrow. We don't even get the 31st. Uh, Aura is awaiting a decision by the Supreme Court of France regarding the renewal of the Montague Dior mining titles. Montague Dior is an open pit gold mine development project, and they are being paid anywhere from uh, $1,200 to $1,300 per ounce of gold. And that's the catalyst, folks. You're looking at in excess of $6 billion, and that's just with the gold they verified. They have not gone in all directions, so there could be a heck of a lot more there. And I like the chart. Let me show you what I found. For those of you who aren't familiar with this trading platform, this is Think or Swim, and you can get it for free from TD Ameritrade. So we are looking at ticker O-R-E-A-F, O-Reef. This is Aria Mining. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. And as you can see, she is on an uptrend the entire six-month period. For the most part, she has been running in this channel, but she has pushed herself out of the channel and then fallen back down to the floor of this channel, up out of it, then back down to the floor. And right now, she's doing another push out of it. But this time, we've got a catalyst, a very hot catalyst. We've got this deal closing, what, tomorrow? So this, if that happens, this thing is going to launch like a rocket. Now, our volume has been decreasing, but I think that'll change if this deal closes. And right now, looking at our oscillators, they're all hot. Every single oscillator is pushing up. Our PPO, our ADX, our MACD, and our RSI. You can't go wrong if all of your oscillators are pointing up. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, she is locked into that channel, primarily underneath the bottom half, underneath the middle line here. She's come up on top of that right now, hitting a high of about eight cents. And she's sitting on top of her nine, over top of the 200 with volume coming in. Our oscillators, ooh, not looking bad. Our PPO is pushing up, our ADX is pushing down. 
So you've got this spread. Whenever you see the PPO and the ADX going opposite directions, guaranteed your price is rising. So that tells me the price is going up. And as long as those two keep spreading, the price will keep rising. But as soon as one of those change direction, it has stopped rising. I like using these two oscillators. Our MACD is having a bounce off of that line right now and starting to rise. And our RSI is rising. It is at 57 right now. Looking at that five day, five minute chart. So she's on top of her 50. She was under it a couple times, pushed away from it, has not been back to it since. She's been floating on her nine day SMA, hitting that high and then pulling back to her 20 came just a little bit underneath it, but because she respects it, she's come right back up on top of it, and she's on her 9 and 20 way up here. Looking safe. Our technicals. Ooh, we still got our spread on our PPO and our ADX. Our MACD has fallen with this drop right there. Looks like it's trying to come back around, and our RSI is pushing up right now. She does still have heat, and it's not about really what the chart says right now. It's about what the chart's going to say if they close this deal. Like they say, you buy on the rumor, you sell on the news. O-R-E-A-F. I can give you 5 million reasons why you may want to consider it. <laughs> I get the feeling a lot of you are going to be surprised when I tell you that Rolls Royce is on the pink tier of the OTC. You're thinking to yourself, that's not the same Rolls Royce as the cars, is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> this is the Rolls Royce very expensive car company, except they don't do that anymore. They sold the car division off to BMW a long time ago. Now they're doing all sorts of other big things. They're working with jet engines. They're working with submarines. They're working with nuclear plants. They're doing a lot of bigger things. They're not gone. They're just not doing cars anymore. Well, this has been falling for five years and it has just now started coming back up. And here's the kicker. It's not like they're not making any money doing that big stuff. Oh, heck yeah, they're doing in excess of $3 billion every quarter. I think this last year they did $13.5 billion. So I think you may want to consider Rolls-Royce before she gets away from us. So Rolls-Royce's sticker, it's R-Y-C-E-F. She finished the day at about $1.81, and she had almost 1.5% gains. And as I said, she's on the pink tier of the OTC. No, she did not fall down here. She isn't being punished. She didn't get kicked off the NASDAQ. This is where she lives. And the funny thing is, is I don't see any green ticks over here. None. I do find that curious. Now, I want to share some more information about the company with you, and this description doesn't quite do it. So, I found this over here, and they gave us little tidbits just so you can get an overall view. So, it was just here in February, they gave us their annual revenue report. They had generated $13.5 billion the last year compared to $11.2 billion the year before. They got themselves $652 million in profit. That was up $238 million. Does it sound like they're having any problem with revenues? No, not at all. They tell us here that the Civil Aerospace Division, which is the largest division in the company, was quite excited when China started traveling again because the company makes 60% of China's wide body planes and 90% of their Airbus engines. They expect that China is going to overtake the U.S. in the world's largest passenger aviation market by 2030. So, the long-term demand for the company's engines looks likely to increase substantially. Some more information down here about other things that they're doing. Its power system segment continues to grow, and its defensive division just announced a deal to provide reactors for Australia's new fleet of nuclear-powered submarines. This is part of a massive defense agreement between Australia, the UK, and the US. Now, don't be confused. We're not talking about weapons here. It's not nuclear weapons, just nuclear energy to make the submarine go. Plus, the firm has secured funding to build a small nuclear reactor for a planned permanent human base on the moon. <laughs> this is getting crazy. From these very expensive cars to nuclear reactors for a human base on the moon. Wow. So as you can see, the company is doing a lot of big things right now. And they've got lots of divisions, folks. Matter of fact, 
if I jump over here, I just want to show this to you. Uh, center here, the float, it's 8.2 billion. 8.2 billion. But what I want to show you is how many subsidiaries this company has. Let me see here. Subsidiaries. All right. Here's a list of subsidiaries. I'm going to click that more button. Now, across here, you've got each subsidiary. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I do believe 10 fit. Well, right there are 19. There's another 10, 29, 39, 49, almost 50, maybe 50 plus subsidiaries. All of these are subsidiaries the company owns. Now, the problem is with the company right now is that they have some debt. They've got $2 billion worth of debt but they're making lots of money, so I'm sure they're chipping away at that. And as I said, the stock has been falling for five years, and right now, it is starting to come around. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, here we go again. 50% drop from 136,000 shares down to 68,000 shares. God, we don't look at a lot of stocks that are doing millions of shares, do we? Share structure for this company. Well, I just told you it was 8.2 billion. Outstanding shares is 8.3 billion. Disclosures. This surprised me. There's not a single disclosure down here. None. I would have presumed there would have been a lot, but there aren't. So let's jump on over to that news if we have any news. Now, they actually don't have any news of their own. All this up here, that's back in 2020. And everything down here, well, some of it is about them, but they're not news presses. These are articles all from Seeking Alpha. But in the absence of news, the headlines from the Seeking Alpha articles can give us some insight. These are in January, all of them. All of these are from January. Rolls-Royce visiting sites for potential UK small nuclear plants. Rolls-Royce to develop quantum computing tools for aerospace defense research. The company's stock has multiple tailwinds and is a strong buy. And the new Rolls-Royce CEO warns of last chance as company a burning platform. wonder what he means by that. <laughs> I think he sees it's recovering right now too. Before it takes off, we really need to consider it. Let's go take a look at that chart. That is Rolls-Royce, ticker R-Y-C-E-F, but it is a five-year, one-week chart. Because I told you, it's been falling for five years. You ought to see that. So five years ago, we had a high of $14.35, a huge fall down into this barren flat zone where she's been for quite a while, hitting a low of 70 cents just back in October. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this flat zone right here. This is as high as she has gotten. So I'm going to grab my support line and I'm going to draw a line right there across the tops of this. That's, that's as high as she got. So I'm hoping that she's going to break that and get some extra oomph and then get close to that 200 and take off. Coming down to current time, six month, four hour view. There's that low bubble of 70 cents in October. That was it. She's done falling. After five years, she has had a change of trend. She's gone over the 50, over the 200, and is not looking back. She is riding this 50-day all the way up. And right up here, this is a sign of strength. Right here, she hit a high. She could have fallen all the way back down to the 50, but instead, she pushed herself back up and has been going sideways, waiting for that 50 day to catch up to her because she doesn't want to come down. We had a poke as soon as it got close showing what she wants to do. Everything looks nice here on the chart. Our technicals, our PPO is pretty plancid. It's gone flat. So is our MACD, though it is actually trying to cross over right now and our RSI is climbing. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour view. All right, that is that resistance we drew on the highest portion of this flat zone. We're trying to get up to there. She has been going sideways. She's made connection with the 50 day SMA here and that's where she's stuck. She doesn't want to go anywhere, but what's happening? Just like the last chart we looked at, here comes the 200 day SMA underneath there. She could have fallen down to it, she doesn't want to come down. She's staying up, waiting for the 200 to catch up to her so that she can continue on her way. That's my best guess. Looking at the oscillators, everything has gone dormant. Flat, flat, flat. We're waiting for something to happen here. 
five day, five minute. There's your 200 right in the middle of the screen. She was above it. She was a below it. She's on it. She's above it. She's on it. She's hanging around this 200, biding time. She's waiting for that one hour, 200 day SMA to come up. That's my best guess, folks. So she is climbing right now. This is the bottom line. We're not looking for a surge tomorrow, this week. There's no big catalyst to have her running. The fact is she's making money. She's got some debt, but she's making enough money that she should be able to cover that debt in due time. In the meantime, the charts have changed. She is not falling anymore. The five-year downtrend is over. Rolls-Royce is coming back with a head steam. They're making good, strong revenues, and they're getting stronger and stronger. Do some more DD, folks. There's a lot of information about this company, but as you can see, I'm kind of excited about Rolls-Royce. Our last company here, it was interesting doing the research on it. This is QIND, Quality Industrial Core. She's got a nice chart, she's got a strong catalyst, and she's got some very interesting history. QIND, she finished today just a little over 61 cents and about 13.5% gains. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and got those ever luscious green ticks I'm always telling her to look for. So, what is QIND about? The best way to do this is through a history lesson, and we're going to use the news to do that. Now, I have gone all the way back to March of 2022. This is back when Wikisoft was looking to do a reverse merger, and they had originally planned to do it with Ether Labs, but something went wrong, and they had to back out of that deal. Well, here in June, they then made another deal with a company called Response Technologies. Do you recognize that name? No, <laughs> this is a wholly owned subsidiary of ILUS. Ah, you do know ILUS, right? Ticker I-L-U-S. This is the Karen Courier play involved with firefighting. They sell fire trucks. They sell the wands that go on the end of the hoses. They outfit high rises with sprinkler systems. They even have a metaverse to teach people how to fight fires. Well, this is their company. They spun it out onto the NASDAQ and they took over the ticker for Wikisoft. Now they've changed their name and they've changed their ticker and they're looking to make deals. And they just made one and that's the big catalyst. So what was the relative volume today around this catalyst? Well, we are normally doing 126,000 shares a day. Today we did 321, almost 100% increase. Share structure for QIND. I did look this one up. We are at about 25 million shares. Not a bad float. Financials for the company. Well, they don't have any money. No, this is not their money. This was Wikisoft. They just got the ticker. They just got the name. And they're just now making a deal which will start to bring in revenues. Disclosures for the company. Well, we've got three 8Ks here. And all of them are about the news about this deal that they've gotten involved with. So let's take a look at that news. We've already seen the old stuff. So let's come up to the current news. Right here is where we left off when they changed their ticker and their name back in June of last year. Now, these highlighted news presses right here, they are all about the same thing, getting ready to make their first acquisition. And their most updated news press came out January 27th. Here they tell us that Quality Industrial Core is a mergers and acquisitions company focused primarily on the industrial and oil and gas sectors. QIND is a majority-owned subsidiary of ILIS. And it was on the 18th of January, 2023, that they signed a definitive share purchase agreement to acquire 52% of Quality International. Now, don't be confused here. The name of this company is Quality Industrial. They are buying Quality International. It's just a coincidence that the names are so similar. So a little bit about Quality International. They are headquartered in the United Arab Emirates. They have been manufacturing for over 20 years now from a facility approximately 10 million square feet big, and they've got about 1,000 employees. The company delivers turnkey integrated solutions for the oil and gas, energy, water desalination, water waste, offshore sectors, and boasts an extensive list of customers, including customers like BP, Shell, Total, Chevron, and others. Now, this is interesting. 
The chairman of the Quality International says, we welcome Eyeless International and Quality Industrial Corp team in joining hands with Quality International. So it's not just QIND that's joining with them, it's Eyeless as well. This is one huge team that is all pulling in the same direction. Historically speaking, Quality International has delivered approximately $100 million in annual revenue and holds a current order book of over $150 million worth of business still needing to be done. Quality International is on several global preferred vendor lists. This is huge, folks. This means they don't have to submit bids. They don't have to try to get the business. They've been put on a list so that if anybody needs the product they're selling, they just go directly to them and buy it. Uh, and they are one of the very few with all the required oil and gas industry certifications and large-scale manufacturing facilities in place. Furthermore, the company is now also actively engaged in delivering equipment for green hydrogen projects in the region. The total price of this acquisition was $137 million, and they're going to pay this off in six payments. Now, they don't give us a date here that I've been able to find when they're going to close this. Uh, no, I did look around. I didn't see a date. But they are so close to it now. So, again, we need to be here before it happens. And the chart does look good. Let me show you how good it looks. Oh, come on. You know what we're looking at? This is QIND, six-month, four-hour view. We have a low bubble at the end of August of 15 cents, and our high was today at virtually 66 cents. Now, she has been going sideways most of this time, but believe it or not, it has been a very subtle and gentle incline, but she's been working very slowly through here. But on March 9th, she changed her mind. She didn't want to stay in first gear. She got it into second gear, third gear, and it looks like fourth gear and rocketed. And it doesn't look like she's pulling back anytime soon. We got lots of volume right now and our oscillators are hot. All of them are sweet. Every single one of them is pushing up. You cannot go wrong. You hear me say this over and over again, but it's true. You cannot go wrong if every oscillator is pointed up. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she hasn't been in a big hurry to get to this channel. It's taken like 20 days for her to get through. And even after she broke out, she wasn't running. She was taking her time until the end of yesterday and today. That's when she took her big jump from 41 cents up to 66 before she fell back to 61 cents. Sitting nicely on our nine day SMA up here. However, it is up there. That's what worries me. The nine day is pretty far away from that 20 day SMA. So I would be suspect of her coming back down some. Looking at our oscillators, they're still good. They had a wee bit of pullback right there, but they've all turned right back up and look very strong. Our RSI is still on fire on the one hour chart. Five day, five minute chart. Well, she has been climbing all five days, started off slow, going through her gear. She was picking up momentum, hit that high, pulled back, and that 50-day SMA was her savior, stopped her from falling any further. Bounced off that, is not on the 50 anymore, is actually on the 9-day, crossed her 20, and is looking good. Had a wee bit of pullback at the end of the day, but everything looks safe. Matter of fact, our PPO, we got that blue line going up and our red line, ADX going down. Whenever you see that spread, the price is going up. Even though we had that little pullback, it says the price is still rising. We've got a crossover on our MACD. Green bars are accumulating and our RSI is at 57. The chart looks good. She's got heat. She is set up. She just needs this deal to close, a piece of news to come out and tell us what's going on. And I get the feeling this is going to go into the second phase of rocketing because God knows she's already started. QIND, it does belong on your watch list, doesn't it? I love doing research and due diligence. You never know what you're going to find. We got two big deals here. O-Reef, ticker O-R-E-A-F, 5 million ounces of gold. It isn't about how much money they're making right now. It's about how much money they're going to make. Then we got Quidden, Q-I-N-D. They've got this huge deal. It's already rocketing. A little more news and we could probably see another burst as well. And then, of course, we got Rolls-Royce. 
No, they're not making fancy cars anymore. They're making fancy engines, fancy submarines, and fancy nuclear reactors, and doing $13 billion a year. They may have $2 billion worth of debt, but I think they can dig out with that sort of revenue. So all of these companies are exciting to me. But of course, do your own DD, folks. The more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya. Thank you.